Amen. Mahalo, Pearlside Church. And how many of you know that uh, 2022 may have been a challenging year, but when you have Jesus, we can still thrive in the midst of those challenges. Can I hear an amen to that? So thank you for all that you, you did together uh, to make a difference in our communities uh, in 2022. And we're just looking forward to what God's going to do in this year and beyond. Can I hear an amen to that? Well, welcome to Pearlside Church, those of you watching online as well as here in person. I'm Billy. I'm the lead pastor here at the main campus. And I want to just thank you guys for showing up on New Year's Day. Um, uh, some of you may be a little tired from last night and, and uh, smoke inhalation and all that. But you're here worshiping God and honoring God. So thank you so much for being in the house. How about a hand for all of our serve teams that make church possible. And... Uh, for starting off this year with God, I just want to say thank you to all of you. And also thank you to the state of Hawaii for that free fireworks show uh, that we all got to endure. Thank you all for spending a ton of money uh, so that me and my kids could just watch from our balcony. That was amazing. Um, I am way too cheap to spend money on fireworks, but I'm appreciative of those that do. So thank you, state of Hawaii. Amen. Um, you know, last night, I hope you had a great, great New Year's Eve with your families and, uh, and friends or whatever you did. Uh, we, I took my son to watch the UH uh, basketball game. They won. That was great. And then we spent some time with family and friends for a little bit. And then we came home a little bit before midnight, um, spent some time together. I, I wanted our kids to, to pray together a little bit and set some goals for 2023. I don't know if you do that, but I, I wanted to do that with them. And so I gathered the kids together and know me and we, I said, you know, guys, I want us to pray a little bit and I want us to set some goals for 2023. First, we reflected on our goals from 2022, and then we prayed, prayed into 2023 a little bit. We watched all of your free fireworks, and then we, we came back together and, and prayed together. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do that was because, how many of you know God has plans for us? We may make plans, but God has plans for us. And so I told them, guys, we don't want to just set our own goals. We want to hear God's voice for his goals for our lives. So I had them pray. Even the little one participated. It was kind of cute. She actually had some profound stuff to say. Maybe I'll share that later. But I had everyone kind of just quiet themselves, pray. Let's listen to the voice of God and just write down three goals that you feel like God's put on your heart. God has plans for us. And if we want to walk out his will for our lives, we need to pause and slow ourselves to hear his voice, to allow him to speak to us so that the life that we live and how we carry out our lives in this year is not directed by our flesh, which sometimes can take us off the path, right, and can go in funky directions. We want to hear his voice so that we can live out his plan. Because the safest place to be, the most blessed place to be, is in the middle of God's will for your life. And the great thing is, no matter how 2022 has gone, maybe it was a great year, as Pastor Kalai said, maybe it was a very challenging year for you. Maybe it was the worst year of your life. I've got great news. We can start again a brand new year today. That all things are new with Christ, amen? And we can begin brand new today, and God washes away our past and allows us to begin brand new. But we got to seek him. We have to hear from him. And so the verse that uh, God put on my heart for us this morning as we begin this brand new year is found here in Jeremiah 29. And it's that famous verse that many of you have heard if you've been around church for a little while. And if you're new, then this, this may particularly speak to you. But Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The Lord has plans for your life. You may say, well, you know, I, I don't really have any plans for my life. That's okay. God has plans for your life. Amen. You may say, I don't know where my life is going. I don't know what's going on. I, don't, I, I feel like life is a mess. God still has plans for your life. Can I hear an amen? He didn't, you're not here by accident. God put you on this planet and in this room for a purpose so that we can begin to live out his purpose for our lives. I, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Now watch this. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. How many think that's good this morning? God has plans not to, not to harm us, but to prosper us, to give us a hope and a future. Maybe you're here and you're hopeless, or you're watching online, you're saying, man, I don't have any hope for 2023. Man, from 2020 on, it's just been a dark cave. God has plans for us to give us a hope and a future. But there's a condition. Verse 12, then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all. Everybody say all. With all your heart. Let's pray this morning as we begin. Father, we thank you for your word. And I pray as we begin this year that, the Holy Spirit, you would speak to us. Speak to us through your word. Speak to us through these moments. And even as we pause a little later on, I pray for a word that would come into our hearts to guide us through this year, whatever it may bring. God, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to our hearts profoundly this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. This is a famous passage of scripture, but you know, when you understand the context, it actually, to me, it's a lot more profound because 
The prophet Jeremiah wrote this to the nation of Israel during a time of great challenge and, and struggle. Because of their disobedience, they were carried off into exile into the nation of Babylon, where they were oppressed for hundreds of years. And in fact, the nation of Israel didn't, uh, was oppressed for, for hundreds of years after that. And he wrote this letter to give them encouragement in the midst of their exile. In the midst of the opposition, in the midst of the oppression, God wrote this or spoke this to the prophet to give the nation of Israel hope that God hasn't forgotten about us. In the midst of the greatest opposition and the greatest oppression of their existence, arguably, God says, I still have plans for you. I have not forgotten about you. There is a hope and a future for you. And this speaks not just to them, but also to us. Because how many, how, how many of us know we all are going to go through different seasons of oppression and exile in our lives, where it seems like things just aren't going the way that it ought to go. And it feels like God has forgotten about us. How many of you ever felt forgotten by God? I know I have. I felt forgotten by God many times. And it's in those moments you can wonder, God, what happened? What happened to your promise? Where did you go? What, what's going on? And, and, and in this context, they were forgotten. They weren't forgotten, but they were in exile because of their disobedience and sin. And how many of us know that when we live apart from God, when we depart from his word and we live independently of God, there are consequences to that. And we reap the consequences that we've sown of living independently of God and in rebellion to God. But even in our own rebellion, God still hasn't forgotten about us. That's what I love about this. They dug themselves into this hole and God still says, I have plans for you. They got themselves into this mess and God still says, I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. And maybe you're here today at the beginning of 2023 and you're saying, man, man, I've dug myself into a hole. You don't understand the mess that I've, I'm in or the mess that I've been through these last couple of years or whatever it is. I've got great news for us. No matter the hole was dug for you or you dug it yourself, God still says, I have plans for you to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. He's an amazing God, isn't he? And no matter where you are today, what season of life you find yourself in, God has not forgotten about you. He still has plans for your life. But there is a condition. The condition is... We need to call on him, come and pray to him, seek him, and find him when we seek him with all of our heart. The safest place to be is in the middle of the will of God. And so it's our responsibility to seek him, to discern his will, and to walk in his will. That's always the condition. It's kind of like this. I have three kids, and, you know, we, 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 plan, you know, we do our best to provide for them, as every parent does. I know you all do that. We do our best to provide and plan out, you know, how they can be successful. And, but they got to walk it out. I can't do their homework for them. All the time. <laughs> no, I, can't, I, I, I can't do it for them mainly because I don't know what the heck is going on. Have you ever tried to do homework? Oh my goodness. Like what? What is this? There's like, it's crazy. So I, I can't walk this out for you. I can't do this for you. I can't go to school for you. I can't, you know, deal with your social problems for you. But I can provide all the path for you, but you got to walk it out. I can't do this for you. And similarly, I don't think God wants to do, he's not going to do it for us. Because he's given us free will to walk this life out. But if we walk with him and we follow the path that he's given to us in his word, it's going to go generally good for you. That's what I told my kids. If you just listen to us, how hard is that, right? Come on, Frank. How hard if you just listen? Life will go generally good for you. But yet you just don't want to. I can't help you. And I think sometimes God's up in heaven like, brah. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that hard. Just, you just got to walk this path out. I, I, I'm oversimplifying that, I know, but if we follow him, if we stay on his path, if we follow his word, things will go generally well. If we seek him and find him and we discern his will and we walk it out, God's got plans for us to prosper us and not to harm us, but it's often us that we veer from the path. Isn't that true? We deviate. We get distracted. We, you know, we chase after the next shiny thing or whatever it is, and, and, and we find ourselves in a ditch at times. But even when Israel found themselves in a ditch, God still says, I have plans for you. Come on back. Come on back. And I don't know, maybe some of you are here today and you're saying, man, I've drifted so far from God. You don't even know how bad my life has been. I've got great news. I don't need to know that. God knows that. And he still invites us to come back. He still invites us to come. If he can invite the nation of Israel back after all of their rebellion, he certainly is inviting you home as well. Can I hear an amen, church? So as we begin this new year, no matter what the past has been like, God invites us home. And he invites us into a great and exciting destiny. He has plans for us. He has plans for you in 2023. He has plans for us beyond. But the question is, will we seek him? Will we seek him with all of our heart? Because if we will, 
we will find him and we will find his purpose for us being walked out and played out. So new beginnings, number one here up on screen, begin when we seek God with all of our hearts, when we seek him with all of our hearts. You know, he's, it's not just kind of casually seeking God. It's seeking him with all of our heart. If we seek him, he will speak to us and he will guide us. But, it, but it's this commitment that I'm going to give it 100% to God. And, and a great illustration of this is, is, you know, remember those of you that are married when you sought your spouse? You didn't just seek them with some of your heart, right? I at least I hope not. Like, you know, when you propose, men, those of you that did, you didn't say, you know, I sort of want to marry you. What you think? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I sort of, I guess, I sort of. That's why the ring's so expensive. Have you noticed? I, I often wonder, like, why does it have to be so expensive? Like, come on, I love you. You know that, right? Why do I got to buy you an expensive ring? Because it shows your commitment. Are you willing to drop months and months and months of worth of, of, of your, your hard-earned money for this person, right? Come on, ladies. If, if some dude proposes to you with a $25, you know, Shirakia or Don Quixote ring, Shirakia doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I just dated, that's where I used to buy my jewelry for my high school girlfriends. Anyway, <laughs> I, I don't, yeah, um, but, but you know, if, if you propose with a $25 Don Quixote ring, that reveals your commitment, doesn't it? But if you saved up for months and years and you purchased this whatever thousands of dollars, it's, it demonstrates an all-in kind of a commitment. Isn't that true? Now, some of you just got nervous. You're like, oh, man, I... My ring was super cheap, bro. <laughs> well, you got away. You got lucky then. You got a great woman. But anyway, um, it, it demonstrates an all-in kind of a commitment. And God wants to see how badly are we going to seek him? Are you just casually seeking me? Because if, ladies, right, if the, if the dude is just casually seeking you, you're like, I don't know about this guy. Or even vice versa. If, if your husband's, if, if your, your, your wife was kind of casual, I guess I'll marry you. Oh, why not? Right? <laughs> You'd be like, why not? You just told me why not right there, you know, but we want an all-in commitment. We want an all-in commitment from someone that we're going to give our whole selves to, for someone that we're going to walk with all of our lives and pour our everything into. God is like that. It's to seek me with all of your heart, not some casual thing. And I think that's where a lot of Christians get hung up because we kind of casually seek God. When I need something, I'll seek you. Or, or when I'm desperate, I'll seek you. Or when I got nothing else to do, I guess I'll come to church. That kind of casual commitment is not going to lead to God's will. That kind of casual following of Jesus is not going to lead to walking out his plans and his purpose for your life. That kind of casual commitment is not going to lead us into God's blessing for our lives. It's all in, seeking him with all our heart kind of a commitment. And maybe the past has been a casual commitment with some of us, maybe those of you watching online. I want to invite us in 2023 to an all in, seeking him with all of our hearts. Because that's where the promises and the plans and the purpose comes into play. We got to seek him with all of our heart. And when we seek him, especially at the beginning of a new year, I found, and Pastor Norman would always say this to us, he, God wants to speak to us, a word to guide us and lead us through a new year, to lead us and guide us through his plans and his purposes for us. Now, I don't know about you, as we begin this year, I want to hear a word from God. I want a word from God that's going to guide me through whatever is coming next, because we don't know what's going to come around the corner. Isn't that true? If you remember back in 2020, I had great plans for 2020. Anybody else thought 2020 was going to be an amazing year? Man, I had plans. I was so excited. Uh, in 2020, I was, I was, I was, I was going to getting ready to turn 40. Naomi had this great birthday party planned for me. I don't ever have birthday parties. It's the first one in like decades, but had ministry planned in Oregon, the Bay Area. We're going to go to Japan and just do a whole bunch of great stuff. And around New Year's, New Year's, I began to pray, mainly because Pastor Norman said, hey, seek God for a word. I was like, okay, I better do that. And I felt the Lord tell me, speak this phrase to me. I felt him say, step up and step in. Step up and step in. Now, I didn't know what that meant, but I was like, okay, that sounds good. I guess, you know, Got a lot of things going on, planned for this year. I better get ready to step up and step in. And so I was coming back the second week of January from a ministry trip in Oregon. And as I was playing, praying on the airplane, and I felt the Lord strongly remind me of that. And, and I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but when, the, when I know the Lord is speaking to me, I, I get kind of, something inside me gets stirred up. I get stirred up. And I was, as I was praying on the airplane, I was like, wow, step up and step in. What does that mean, Lord? So I landed back in Honolulu, it was January 13th, my, my birthday's on the 14th, Naomi picked me up with, with the kids, and we were in the car, and I told her, you know, I had this weird experience when I was on the plane, I was praying, and I felt the Lord really strongly speak to me, step up and step in, what do you think that means? She goes, I don't know, what do you think it means? I'm like, I don't know, I'm hungry, let's go eat. So we went to Zippy's, 
We went to Zippy's right down over here with the kids. And we rarely go out to eat. So this was kind of a special occasion. And uh, we go into Zippy's. And I'm just, this, this phrase is ringing in my head. Step up and step in. Step up and step in. I don't know what that means. So we, we sat down to eat. I got one ton min. I remember what I was eating. And as, I was, as we just began to eat, I heard this ruckus over on the right side over here. And someone screamed out, oh, my God, he's choking. So I look over. And there was a larger gentleman hunched over his table. And he was clearly choking. And the phrase just screamed in my head, step up and step in. So I got up and I went over to the table. And I was just going to like hit him on the back, you know, hard, you know, like just to spit that out, whatever you're choking on, right? But as I got to the table, he started falling under the table. So I got behind him and I grabbed him and I pulled him up because I was like, if he's under the table, it's going to be harder to help this guy. So I pulled him up onto the bench and, and I was like, well, since I'm here, I might as well start, you know, thrusting because I took CPR in college. I'm like, I'm here already. So, all right, let's go. I just started doing the thing, you know, and I was like thrusting. It felt like forever, but it wasn't really that long. But the phrase in my head, step up, it was, it was like pounding in my head. And so I'm doing it and I'm looking around. Everyone's just kind of sitting there like. Can I be honest with you? I got a little irritated because <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> so I remember I was like, somebody better be calling 911 right now. <laughs> I, I yelled that out because I was in an adrenaline and, you know, whatever. And so finally he coughed out whatever was in his throat and, and all over my shoe. It was kind of gross, but. And I was like, oh, my God. And so, so I, sat, I stayed there with him, and the, the, the family was there. And then the fire department came and all that kind of stuff. And as I went back to my table, I was like, that was crazy. So that kind of stuff doesn't ever happen to me. That's never happened to me. And I don't know that I would have been aware and alert to it had I not been listening to the voice of God that said, step up and step in. Because when I walked into the room, I was looking around. I was like, what is going to happen tonight? And I don't, have the, I don't do that, okay? When I go out, I'm like, I don't talk to nobody. <laughs> That's just me, all right? But, but I was alert because... I listened for the voice of God. And that thing was ringing in my head the whole time. Even when I was eating my one ton min, what, I kept on thinking, what's going to happen? Now, I don't think God only wants to speak to me like that. I think he wants to speak to all of us like that. But oftentimes I've found, even for me, I don't make space to pause to listen to the voice of God. And we may miss the moments that God wants to give to us. So this is January 13th, 2020. And I was thinking, well, that's crazy. Okay, so then I'm thinking, this is going to be a great year, God, because I got free napples from that. You know, somebody gave me free napples, and the manager paid for our dinner. I was like, yeah, baby, let's go. I, it's going to be a great year. And then COVID hit, and everything changed. But you know what? That same word, step up and step in, really helped me during COVID. At moments where I kind of started getting a little depressed. Anybody got a little depressed in 2020? At moments where I kind of started feeling down and just kind of like the tunnel was just like long and dark and there's no light. The thing that guided me through that was that same word, step up and step in. And so I, instead of feeling sorry for myself, I tried to look for ways to step up in those moments and different things. But here's, what I, here's my point in sharing that is I think God wants to speak to all of us. A distinct word that will be unique for your life to help us carry us through whatever challenging seasons are coming along. Because like I said, I had great plans. This was going to be an amazing year. But there were other things that were coming along the line that I didn't know about. But God did, and he wanted to prepare me. And so by pausing and listening, he, 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 he set the, the, the table for me to live the way that he wanted me to live in 2020. And I think he wants to do the same thing for all of us. And so at the end of the service today, we're going to pause. We're going to make some room to hear the voice of God. Let him speak to us. And maybe you'll get a word this morning. Maybe you won't. For me, it was on closer to January 13th. It was later on in the year. But whatever it is, we need to pause to hear his voice to speak to us. Amen. Because we can make our own plans, but we need God's plans. We can, we can, or we can blind ourselves to what's going on and just say, I'm just going to have a fun old time in life. And God's going, no, no, I want you to be aware and alert and, and seeking me in different ways. But I know that the Lord wants to speak because that's the kind of God he is. Just like every good parent will speak to their children to guide them, God is a good father. And he wants to speak to us as his kids to guide us through whatever is coming in 2023 and beyond. Can I hear an amen to that? I need to renew my CPR certification, though, because I don't think I did it very well, um, but it worked. So praise God. Amen. Maybe I'll make that a goal for 2023. Um, but we need to seek him. And when we seek him, he wants to speak because that's the kind of God he is. Now, seeking God, number two, and this is very important, requires repentance or a turning away from sin. Seeking God requires repentance or a turning away from sin. What is repentance? The Bible says that uh, the, the, in the original language, to repent literally meant a 180 degree turn. You're heading in one direction towards living a certain way or certain plans that you had or agendas. And to repent means I'm going to turn around and go in the exact opposite direction. 
So if in 2022 or whatever it is, we were living for ourselves and our own personal agenda, or maybe it's something that you know wasn't right in your life, to repent means to turn around and go in the opposite direction. I'm not only not, no longer going to do that, I'm going to go do the good that is the opposite of the bad that I was doing. I'm now going to live for God rather than live for myself. That's what repentance means. It's not a casual, I'm sorry, right? You, you, it's, like, it's like one time this guy hit my car. Uh, I was driving down the street, bang, banged into my car. He, he rolled down his window and he yelled, hey, sorry, and he drove off. See, that wasn't repentance, okay? That was bullying me because he was a big dude and I was small, right? Uh, sorry is not repentance. Repentance would be pulling over the car, getting out of the car, and making it right, yeah? Giving me cash to fix the bumper. That would have been repentance. And a lot of us go, sorry, God, but we don't change our behavior. A lot of us go, sorry, yeah, God, for whatever, but we don't do anything different. That's not repentance. And that will hinder us from seeking God and hearing his voice. And what we need to repent of is sin, which is living apart from God, doing, doing things apart from God's word. And sometimes it's obvious stuff, stuff that's obviously not good for us, stuff that's obviously against the law or immoral and all those kinds of things. I don't have to list that out for you. But sometimes we need to repent of things that are even good, but distract us from following God. Sometimes it's good things, but it takes us off of God's plan for our lives, and we need to even throw that off. Look at what Hebrews 12 says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. What hinders you from following God? What hinders us from giving him 100% and seeking him with all of our hearts? Sometimes it's the obvious stuff that's bad. You know, you're, you're cheating, you're lying, or whatever. But sometimes it's good stuff that just distracts us. Sometimes we just get busy with life. Isn't that true? I've got three kids, and, you know, right now only my oldest is, you know, busy in sports. But now my, 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 my middle child wants to start doing something, and my younger child wants to start doing stuff. And that's all good things. But if we're not careful, that can easily hinder, right? Because now we're so distracted going from one thing to the next, and, you know, and we're not following the Lord. We're following our activities. And I think that might be one of the greatest challenges that many of us face in our communities. We're just busy. And sometimes we need to throw that stuff off so that I can put God first. Now, I'm not saying don't put your kids in activities, but within reason and within margin so that we can keep God a priority. Can I hear an amen to that? Because if we don't do that, we can't complain when we're not walking in God's will. We did that. That's the hole that we dug. And we need to maybe put our priorities in order. The, the, the metaphor here is throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked for us. The metaphor here is of a runner who runs in a race, right? Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a runner, but I noticed runners wear very short shorts. Have you noticed that? And they wear as little clothing as necessary to reduce the drag, yeah? And that, there, there's, there's a lesson there. We have a lot of things in our lives that can cre create drag and hinder our ability to run. Swimmers, if you're a swimmer, I mean, they shave all their body hairs off, I hear. So I'd never be a swimmer. Too hairy. <laughs> but, but if you remove the drag... <laughs> Yeah, I got unnecessary jokes this morning. You remove the drag so that we can fulfill God's purpose and win the race. What is causing drag in your life? Maybe it's the activities. Maybe it's the busyness. Maybe it's being distracted with all types of different things. But we need to remove those things so that we can run the race. That's what repentance is. It's saying, I'm going to go in this opposite direction. I'm going to throw off what needs to be thrown off. I'm going to let go of what needs to be let go of so that I can do the will of God for my life. Going back to the metaphor of marriage, you can't get married to someone while holding on to old girlfriends or boyfriends, amen? You have to repent of them, turn away from them in order to turn to the one. It's the same thing with God. We can't turn towards God while we're holding on to all kinds of stuff from the past that would hinder us. You following what I'm saying? So what do we need to throw off in 2023? If you're taking notes, you know, you got a big sheet of blank notes there, maybe even take a moment as, and write down some things that maybe need to be thrown off. What are some things that I need to throw off? What are some things that kept me distracted and busy and took me away from focusing on God and his purpose and plans for my life? And then number three, repentance requires turning towards God and his plans for our lives. Repentance is a two-step. It's turning away from something, but it's turning towards God. It's turning away from all the things that would hinder us and turning towards God and his plan for our lives. God has plans for us, as we said, and we need to turn towards him. 
Philippians says, the Apostle Paul writes in the book of Philippians, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I'm gonna strain towards, I'm gonna reach towards, I'm gonna lean towards what God has ahead of me. Verse 14, I press on. Notice this, this very active, intentional language. I press on towards the goal to win the prize which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. We don't just turn away from the bad stuff or the distractions. We turn towards the goal that God has for us. So we need to discern his voice. We need to hear his voice so that we can pursue with all of our hearts. And then lastly, as we get ready to come to communion in our response this morning, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to live out God's plans for us in 2023. We can't do this on our own. See, at the end of it all, we can't live this life on our own successfully for God. There are forces of darkness. There are forces of evil and, and, and demonic distractions that want to pull us away from God's will. And we need his help. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. And thank God, Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to help you. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to guide you, to strengthen you, to empower you, to live the life that I've called you to live. Acts 1.8, Jesus said this just before he ascended into heaven. He called his disciples to this great mission of taking the gospel to the ends of the earth, casting out demons, healing the sick, all this amazing stuff, right? And he said, but you need something to do this. You need help. He said, verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. He, in fact, told his disciples, don't leave Jerusalem until you receive this power because you can't do it on your own. And many of us have been trying to live for God in our own flesh. I'm just going to muster up the will. I'm going to muster up the strength to do it on my own. No, no, no. We need to rely on him and the Holy Spirit's power to do this. We can't fulfill God's will on our own. We can't live holy on our own. We can't do the things that God's called us to do on our own. We need to tap in to the source who is the Holy Spirit sent by God to help us to be his witnesses or to be his living representations on the earth. And maybe this morning we need to be refilled with the power of the Holy Spirit in order to do what he's called us to do. Maybe we've been feeling empty. We haven't tapped into him in a long time. I'm going to ask that God will fill us afresh this morning so that we can launch out into 2023, not only unhindered by the past, but filled with his power for the future. Can I hear an amen to that? But before we close... What do you need to throw off in 2023? What are some of the things that you need to throw off? You know, the leg hairs you got to shave, right? The stuff that needs to come off that's been causing drag. What, what needs to come off of our lives so that we can run this year? And maybe as, as uh, Mike starts playing back there, maybe we can just take a moment, first of all, and just bow our heads. And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts about these areas of our lives that we need to throw off in order to run the race in 2023, in order to hear God's voice. Holy Spirit, would you speak to our hearts? What are those things that need to be thrown off? The bad stuff, the sins that are obvious, but even the good things that have become a distraction. What is your will for our lives? How can we live unhindered by the past and unhindered by sin? if the Lord has dropped a word, a thought, and you can go ahead and just write that down. You're not going to share it. You don't have to share it with anybody. It's for you. Just take notes. Begin to write down, what is the Lord saying? What are the stuff that we need to throw off of our lives so that we can live for Jesus in this year and beyond?
I see some of you writing, writing. that's great. You know, for me, I, I definitely know it's the busyness. Three kids and all of their activities. I make excuses. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that, right? And I need to prioritize and reorder some things to make sure that God is first and his purposes in my life are first. What about you? What do you need to throw off this year? Maybe it's too much Netflix, not enough Bible. Maybe it's too much Facebook, not enough God's book. <clears throat> Whatever it is, because we want to begin afresh, putting him first, amen. So Father, help us to do that. As we begin 2023, we wanted to start off with communion. And as you came in, you should have received the communion cup. If you don't have one, go ahead and lift up your hands and the ushers will come around. <laughs> and can give you a communion cup. We have some folks over here. <clears throat> when Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took, he got the disciples all together. And he took the bread and he, he broke it. And he said, and, and the cup, and he blessed it. And he said, whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And throughout church history, this has been a moment of recentering for the church. That where life, we get distracted and busy, communion reminds us, no, it's all about him. Because it was his body that was broken. It was his blood that was poured out to give us life and eternal life. Therefore, the lives that we live should be lived because of him. And as we partake of communion this morning, we remind ourselves that as we begin this year, we want to make it all about Jesus. Like I said, maybe 2022 has not been a great year for you and you've lived, you know, maybe apart from him and different things. It's okay. We can begin today. Amen. We can re-begin. We can restart. We can refresh. We can renew for a new year. Can I hear an amen to that? So go ahead and take up, peel back that first layer, which reveals the bread. Scripture tells us when he took the bread, he blessed it. And he said, this is my body. It is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. It was the body of Jesus that bore the weight of our sins. He took our sins on his body on that cross so that we can be forgiven, so that we don't have to live under the weight of our past lives of sin. It was put on him. And this reminds us, because of what Jesus did, we can live a new life as well. Amen. Will you bow your heads? And, and before you partake of the bread, just go ahead and thank him for the sins that he's forgiven. For the things of our past that we through faith put on his body so that we can live a new life. Just take a moment and just thank him for how he's forgiven your sins. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you loved us so much that you took all of our sin onto yourself and the punishment that our sins deserve, you bore on your body. That's why it was broken. And so, Lord Jesus, lest we take that for granted, we begin this year by, rem by saying thank you, by remembering and reminding ourselves of the salvation that you purchased for us. And we say thank you, Lord, for washing away our past taking our sin on yourself. May we never take this for granted. May we live this life in response to your love for us. We say this in Jesus' name, amen. You may partake of the bread. Go ahead and peel back that second layer, which reveals the cup. Similarly, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me and the juice here representing the blood of Jesus that was poured out for us to wash away our past, but also to empower us for a new life. That his blood, the pure, holy blood of Christ would flow through us and empower us to live for him in this year and beyond. Let's pray as we bless the cup. Father, thank you for the new life that we can live in you. That no matter how bad our past was, that doesn't determine the new life that we get to live through you so lord jesus thank you for your blood that was washing that washed away our sins and empowers us to live 
fruitfully and faithfully for you. Help us in this new year to live for you because of all that you've done for us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may partake of the cup. We're going to sing in just a moment, but before we do, in this attitude of worship, I'm going to pause for about 60 seconds and let the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts. I believe he wants to drop a word into many of our hearts. And the way that God speaks to me, I've never heard the audible voice of God. I've known people who have, people that I trust, and, you know, they're not crazy. You may hear the audible voice of God. I don't. But the way the Lord often speaks to me is a thought, a word. Like I said, on that, in 2020, it was very clear. Step up and step in. I just, just I heard it. I just saw it in my, in my mind. And maybe the Lord will do that for you. Maybe it's a word. Maybe he'll remind you of a scripture. Maybe he'll put a, a visual, visual picture in your mind. But I'm, I'm going to pause for about 60 seconds. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. What does he want to say to you? He might just say, I love you. He might just say, I haven't forgotten about you. Or maybe it'll be something more specific. And then I'd love for you to write that down. You can take notes on your phone, whatever. But we're going to create a space for about a minute and just let the Holy Spirit speak to us before we worship him this morning. Amen. If you're comfortable with the way where you're seated, great. If you want to get down on a knee, you can do that as well. No pressure. However you're most comfortable so that the Holy Spirit can speak to your heart. So Holy Spirit, we invite you to come this morning. We invite you to speak to our hearts. God, we don't want to just live our own agenda. We don't want to just do our own thing. God, we want you to guide us. So as we pause in this moment, Holy Spirit, would you drop a word, would you drop a thought into our hearts and our minds so that we can live for you in this year? I pray this in Jesus' name. Would you speak to us? Amen. Father, we thank you. And I pray that you continue to speak to us in these next days, even the next weeks. God, that we can know and have a confidence that we're walking in your will. And God, help us stay on that path to push away the distractions, to throw off all that would hinder us so that we can run your race that you have marked out for our lives. Thank you for each person here. And the new beginnings that you're gonna begin today as we commit to walking with you. Father, help us to do that, that at this time, when we begin a new year, 365 days from now, God, we can look back at all the great stuff you've done this year, God. Help us, God, to begin afresh today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.